Hi, this is Dr. Tom Walla here to tell you a little bit about how to catch insects for my biology insect biology class. So uh, today we're going to talk about how to use a net where you can collect. A couple things about collecting. Uh, you can collect pretty much anywhere on public lands, but you can't go to state parks and you can't go to national parks. Uh, those are places you're not allowed to collect insects, not without a very specialized permit. So don't even kid around with it. There's plenty of public land you can work on. And uh, uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about how to catch those insects. So you're going to need a few tools. Um, one of those tools is your net. A couple things about this net. Uh, it's been around a while. You see it says Mesa State Biology Department. That was a while ago. Constructed of two different kinds of materials. A very firm steel ring, wooden stick here handle. This is canvas cloth. And then at the end is the mesh bag. Uh, the canvas protects this from being torn apart by thorns and brush. So if you hit this against a piece of brush and you hit this soft bit at the end with the mesh, it'll rip it. So um, this is tough up here on the edge. Um, the, the mesh is necessary at the end because as, the, as you're catching, say, a little butterfly that's out here and you're pulling this net across, it has to be mesh, mesh to let the air go out or you'll be pushing a pillow of air in front of it. If you're like trying to catch a butterfly with a pillowcase, you'll quickly find you'll be pushing the butterfly along with your pillowcase full of air. So that's why you need the mesh. Some of these nets have all mesh, that's fine. You just have to be more careful with it. Don't hit a lot of sticker bushes. Now, a um, couple other things you'll need are going to be, I often carry like a fanny pack with me, but I don't have mine today, but I brought along a couple of tools. One is an insect, uh, a kill jar. I like to use Paul Prudhomme's Magic Seasoning Blends perfect kill jar shape. Um, this one doesn't have any kill jar solution in it, but you would have cotton balls, a piece of cardboard, put some, uh, some acetone in there or some ethyl acetate. And basically you put your insect in there and it will kill it um, eventually. So that's a great way to go. Alternative methods uh, that people will use are uh, just straight alcohol. Um, so you can put either rubbing alcohol or 70% ethyl alcohol into a jar, and as you can see, you can store some insects in there. They do sometimes lose their colors, but it's a great safe way to preserve them for quite some time. You can store a lot of bugs in one jar. Just don't break it, you'll have alcohol everywhere. Another thing you might wanna have with you is your trusty insect collection case. This could be Tupperware, could be just about anything that you find, a recycled yogurt container. Uh, but what I do is I roll up some paper towels and I put them in there and what that means is I can put some beetles and some flies and some wasps and they'll be separated by the rolls of the paper towel and they won't go chinka 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 and break off all their legs and antennae all right and so then you can store them in here and a whole day of collecting you're going to want several of these and you can put a label in there for each location carry them in your fanny pack or in your satchel or your backpack all right today I'm just using the old pocket technique I want to tell you a little bit about uh how to swing a net. Net swinging, as we call it. Let's go swing some nets, fellow entomologists. Let's go have some fun, catch some insects. And um, a lot of people think this is sort of a, a, you know, sort of a, oh, I don't know if it matters how we do this or whatever. Let me tell you that I've seen some entomologists that are serious, uh, seriously strong entomologists. This is more of a ninja art. Spinning the net depends on high net speed and accuracy. So you'll see that I'm using both hands. Rarely is it a one-handed act. Don't have any control. It's like a tennis racket, but you choke up on it like this, and ha! Well, let me show you how actually to catch insects. So let's say that you're looking for an insect and it's flying around and it lands on a plant, like this one, okay. It's not really an insect, it's a plant. I mean, it's a doll that's been planted here and I'm gonna try to catch it. Now, you'll notice that if I kind of whimsy, whimsy come over here and I'm like, I'm gonna kind of get it and I hit it like this, it'll fly away, right? If I try to hit it like this, the young entomologist is often, often tempted to try and pound it. Ha! What will end up happening is I will knock it to the ground and probably not have it in my net when I'm done. The way to do it is to imagine yourself scooping underneath it using the firm steel rim to collect the plant material it's on and the insect. But it's got to be a snap. So I'm going to make this split decision. I'm going to see, ooh, here's my insect. 
Legs apart, knees bent, arms out. Three, two, one. Very quick. Now when I hit it, the thing that you see there is that I flip the net. And now the insect is trapped inside. Even if it's a giant stinging wasp, it can't get to me in theory because this is folded over. So now I can look inside and see my prey item in there and I'm feeling pretty good about that. Okay, so you can control it like this. I'm gonna repeat that shape real quick. I came up and then a flip of the net. If you just go up like this and you go, ha ha, it'll come right back out in your face. So you have to up and flip the net, okay? Now, the next thing we'll do is try to get it out of the net without getting stung or bitten or scratched. I like to learn the one-handed till jar skill if you can, okay? That's an advanced skill. If you can't, just use both hands, get the lid off there, All right? I usually take the lid off completely and I go and I control the insect like this and then I slide my till jar up and insects will typically get trapped in here and now I'm going to try to get my organism into the jar and then put a lid on it. Oh dear. Now, I would typically close the lid but the feet of my favorite little doll uh, don't fit because it's rather large. But you can see now I can close the lid and inside the kill jar it will stay. And then you're good. You can do this with some very large wasps. As long as you're careful, I suggest you practice with flies because they don't sting and they generally don't bite. Let's take a look at another type of interaction you might have. Um, you might be out hunting insects and uh, you're scanning, right? Some of these things are landing on flowers. I usually look on flowers, so I'm looking on plants and stuff. You might be out there on the ground, you know? Like say, you know, ah, I see something. Could be a tiger beetle, for example. I thought that bird was gonna eat my doll. So now I'm gonna sneak up on it. I can't scoop under it. What do I do? There is a trap method. I don't like it, it's kind of messy, but it does work. So I, I, before I begin, I pull up the end of my net to make sure it's empty. I might invert it like this. Okay, and then I see my insect and then I can come down it like this. Now the downside of the trap method is now what? What you typically would do is lift the cone and the insect would fly away up to escape and would hopefully come up in here and then you could trap it, okay? Alternatively, you're kind of stuck. It's flying around, it won't come up. Once it's off the ground, you do your flip and there's your bug. These are probably the two most common methods of trapping. Um, it is a skill, I kid you not, like tennis and piano playing and martial arts. Insect collecting is a practice skill. So good luck.